Gonzaga Nation SI, I'm your host, Dan Dickow, with a special guest, former terrific Zag legend, as well as the director of the push on the NIL side with Gonzaga. He'll share with you a little bit about the name change, as well as the direction that they are taking everything. So uh, without further ado, Matt Santangelo. Matt, thanks for joining. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Dan. So... Really quickly, uh, share with us the name change of the collective that is kind of uh, forming a lot of these Gonzaga NIL deals, um, because you guys started off as friends of Spike. What is the current name now, and and what was the reason behind it? Yeah, so the the new name, uh, which we just launched in early March, about the same time as the West Coast Conference Tournament, is the Zags Collective. Um, So we went from friends of Spike, as you said, that was started it. Zags Collective now, same philosophy, same strategy, same people involved. Um, really, it was just a name change. Uh, and it was a, a kind of a, a, a big win for us because now uh, we were able to license the name Zags. University um, owns the rights to that name. Um, and through a, a kind of increased awareness and um, uh, continued growth of the partnership, uh, with the university and the athletic department and Learfield and all the kind of the, the powers that be um, inside that world. Um, this was a kind of a great move for us. So as Gonzaga's understanding of name, image, and likeness um, has evolved and grown, and you kind of alluded to all the changes that have taken place, um, this is just a nice kind of endorsement, like kind of legitimizes the partnership that always existed uh, but legitimizes the partnership publicly because we can now use the name Zags. And that's what, you know, that's what we're known as. So it makes it um, uh, a lot more understandable for um, people that want to support and contribute to it. So with the the new name, obviously, um, there, there's a change, uh, but there's been developments in this NIL space ever since the law, the rules were enacted that college players could be paid. Can you share with us maybe a few of the uh, the biggest changes so far in ways that uh, uh you know the average fan can relate to and and understand because what i've seen is it's it's ever changing yeah and i think it it continues to be ever changing i think that the biggest one that the, um you know i would caution the the fans you know our the zeg nation is that you, know, you can't trust all the headlines um, and I think, you know, I'm sure you've heard stories kind of behind the scenes. Um, I know I've seen and heard stories as well that even though um, someone's NIL collective, a university's NIL collective says they're going to pay X amount of dollars to an athlete, what we've seen is that money hasn't always exchanged hands. Because the big thing around name, image, and likeness is, is that athletes, no matter, you know, what school, what sport, whatever, Um, They have to have a quid pro quo. The athletes have to do something that's kind of a fair market value um, in order to receive that payment. You know, if they are going to lend their name, image, and likeness to a project, to a commercial business, to a community organization, to a nonprofit, the athletes have to go and do something to earn that, you know, the income tied to it. And that's where I think it's been a a little bit tricky because it's not just athletes getting paid. You know, we're not just getting you know, a bag full of cash in the parking lot. Like they actually have to <laughs> sign contracts. Uh, there has to be uh, defined deliverables that the athletes have to has to complete and execute. And then once those things are defined, completed and executed, they get paid for it. You know, just like most of us do in our everyday life. Uh, you know, you're trading our, our time and talent for uh, for a job, for income. Um, and so I think that, you know, the biggest changes are these kind of these headlines um that we're seeing that are spectacular you know million dollar deal for a college quarterback that we're not really sure if it ever truly comes to fruition and that was kind of leading me into my next question is how legitimate are some of these outlandish numbers that are out there you know there's a there's a number or there's a website out there i believe it's called on three that has uh, the market valuation uh for either current student athletes or prospective student athletes. And and it's a lot different than in actual professional sports where an agent negotiates a fee with a team and or negotiates a contract with a business for a sponsorship. Um, How how do the, 
how do these market valuations come about and how do you guys yeah. fair market value is? Yep. So those are great questions. So I think on the on three, now I don't know their algorithm. I don't know exactly all the variables they put in their, their formula, but it's going to have a lot to do with, you know, impressions, you know, social media, digital impressions. So when you put, you know, Dan Dickow's face and name on something that has value, you know, these current athletes have value and that can be determined by essentially their social media presence. Um, you know, in addition to there's got to be, uh, you know, in social media, a lot of ways is tied to, you know, their performance on the court. But name, image and likeness is just worried about the social media presence or if they can carry a conversation, if they're engaging, if they're, you know, gregarious, if they can read a script for a commercial, make it sound dynamic or at least be charming enough to make local, you know, local commercials. Um, you know, all those things are kind of factors in in these variables. So I don't know on three's exact, um, you know, algorithm or exact formula, but that's essentially what those are some of the variables they're using, mostly social media impressions and eyes on so that if we post something to our Twitter, they can kind of quantify that. Um, no different than, a, than an influencer. Um, and so when we look at market value, we're trying to um, you know, when you're working with a business, they have their own set of metrics on what their return on investment is. You know, some of it is is impressions. Some of it's going to be how many sales that draw it drives. Um, some of it's going to be more community minded. You know, if they're trying to educate the community on an initiative, um, for example, uh, uh, Washington Trust has a campaign around fraud defense. Really, really, you know, cyber security and fraud defense. Well, we thought it'd be great to use athletes to talk about defense. You know, so Michaela Williams on, on the women's side, on the ladies' egg side, um, did a campaign with them to talk about fraud defense. Now, that was valuable to have a student athlete represent that messaging for Washington Trust Bank. Washington Trust feels good about it. The athlete lends their name, image, and likeness to it. That's a really good example of how name, image, and likeness could work. Um, and that market value is negotiated per that deal with that business. And then the athletes just get offered it. Hey, I have 10, they, they want you to do this and I have $10. Are you willing to do it? And they go, yes, I'm willing to do it or no, I'm not willing to do it. And it's about that simple. Um, again, I think where we um, can kind of get slip up, slip up is this idea that um, it's taking millions of dollars to get these athletes to come to school and the millions of dollars are just kind of coming out of thin air and the athletes don't have to do anything. That's kind of the headline you know, that's the headlines that, that we see on, on social media and other uh, news sources that aren't necessarily, um, you know, playing out in the real world. You know, I talked to a, a college coach on a different staff just a couple of days ago, and we were talking about NIL because coaches can't be too involved. Obviously, they have to be in the loop. They need to know what's going on for their players. They need to know what's going on on the business side, but they can't broker these deals. But this coach essentially told me that, um, they were having some struggles with guys in the transfer portal because there was jealousy within who was making what. And this particular oh, yeah. school a season ago essentially said, we're going to pool all of our money and split it perfectly even between all 15 guys. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm sure you talk with other collective directors across the country trying to, to combat how to figure out the maybe the jealousy and animosity because once you throw money in there and you've seen it as a professional athlete matt guys start looking over their shoulders uh, is there a blueprint within your you know structure to kind of help guide people to understand like hey this is the entry point into call uh, professional sports in regards to to understanding that person's work value might be more than yours and there's not it's not a slide against you yeah, I think I think you hit the nail on the head there. I think it's a little bit, I mean, not only are we educating the general public and Zag Nation on what this new world of name, image, and likeness is, but we're also educating players. And so I think when you really start to look at the value of name, image, and likeness, not what you did last night on the court, right? That's where I, I think it gets a little tricky. Like, oh, I'm getting, I got more shots. I got more minutes. You know, I, I get more plays. My number called more often. Um, and I'm getting paid less money, you know, whatever. I think that's where that animosity grows from. I think for us, it's really trying to use, like we talked about, maybe that's that social media presence. Maybe it's, um, uh, you know, your ability to engage with an audience. It's things that are outside of the court where your name, image, and likeness has value. And so I think for us, it's it's about educating what's possible. And, 
And frankly, you know, this last year's team is a good example. Drew Timmy is uh, – there's value to his brand. There's value to his name, image, and likeness. I, I think a reasonable person can understand that they're going to, you know, earn more money on the open market than someone who's not as gregarious, doesn't have the following, doesn't have the, the kind of the brand. And so it's really about educating the players to avoid those types of um, animosity because – Again, this is about their individual name, image, and likeness, and some people's individual name, image, and likeness has more value than others. What's the success rate for a business that calls up the Zags Collective and says, hey, I want to get a deal done. This is my budget because, you know, uh, with Shoot360 and Spokane, you know, I've got a kind of a, a detailed budget of what makes sense for us. Um, yep. yet there are large companies, large corporations that want to hire guys for stuff. I guess how many deals actually come to fruition once people reach out and say, Hey, I'm interested in doing something. I have yet to have one that reached out to us that we haven't put something together for. Um, there are some that some that we have proactively, you know, reached out to maybe some smaller local businesses. We wanted to get something together with the uh, restaurant community here in Spokane. Um, and that becomes, you know, at times it can be a little cost prohibitive. You know, these are small, you know, self-proprietor type businesses. You know, they don't necessarily have the marketing budget to um, to do something like a name that would be tied to name, image, and likeness. Some do, some don't. Um, and so those ones were a little bit more, you know, we would like to do something, but we only have X amount of dollars. And we know that the player is only going to accept Y amount of dollars, so, you know, a higher value. Um, but the ones that come to us, and that's where this is nice with the athletes, especially at Gonzaga, the, you know, and, and the Zags Collective, is we just talk to the athletes. Hey, Dan, would you be willing to do something for, you know, a hamburger and a Coke? Yep, sure will. Yeah, I'm there, you know. We would have done that years ago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the world you know, has changed. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, and so, or no, or maybe you come back and say, no, I want, you know, I want French fries too. You know, and so it, it becomes that negotiation. But when when someone proactively reaches out to us, and we go out to the athletes and we have a, you know, a good idea of what the athletes going to have to do. Um, and we have that budget in mind, uh, you know, for the mo most part, every deal has gotten done because athletes are willing to do this stuff, um, yeah. you know, and make appearances or use their social media, use their name, image, and likeness to promote a certain thing. Um, and that part's been really great. Has there been a, I, I know you said the completion rate is almost a hundred percent, but has there been a company that kind of, you caught wind of exactly what they do and you're like, no, this doesn't fit. And you didn't <laughs> take the conversation any further. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I mean, not only the ones that everyone in the public would know, you know, it's like, you know, Northern quest would be an example. Cause obviously the gambling piece, um, you know, no lies, another great partner of ours, a uh, brewery um, brew house here in town, but they have, um, you know, it's Northern quest resort and casino. So the resort has, but like, you know, we can't do things just straight up with uh, with alcohol, tobacco, gambling, you know, in the state of Washington with marijuana. You know, those are just no-nos. Uh, the conversation doesn't even get started. So I don't have any good um, behind-the-scenes stories because the conversation never even got started with the groups that uh, uh, haven't begun. But, like, Ben Gregg did an awesome one with Grandmas for Gregg with the Evergreen Retirement Community. It's a group of, of literal grandmas. Um, who just absolutely fell in love with Ben Gray. And so one of the gentlemen there uh, called us and, and wanted to get Ben Gray out for an hour, like Q&A, just kind of the, uh, basically the grandmas, I think, just wanted to see him in person and, and, and meet him. And it was one where, you know, it wasn't a huge like earning opportunity for Ben, but Ben was like, yeah, absolutely, I'll do that. And he went out, it was just yesterday, and he went out and made this whole community's day. Um, it was really special. It, it was it was really thoughtful. Um, the grandmas loved it. I mean, it's been picked up on local news because it's just, it's kind of a fun, a feel good story. Um, but that was one where Ben was like, "Oh yeah, absolutely, I'll do that." And so it's really just kind of presenting the opportunity to the athletes. Ultimately, it's their name, image, and likeness. They get to lend it to what they want to. Um, but we haven't had any crazy, crazy outlandish ones where an athletes are like, "No way," or I have to go like no way like that's not <laughs> happening you know, they kind of hang up it's been good so so back to how the deals are are kind of pushed to completion um yeah we talked a little 
little bit about, you know, you have to have certain deliverables of an athlete has to do to meet the requirements at, at, what at, at a certain point is it like okay the money goes to the zags collective and maybe this is too deep of a conversation uh for a podcast like this but the money goes into the collective it's held until the deliverables or de- deliverables are done by the student athlete uh or is it direct from the business to the student athlete yep so those ones are done two ways so the the contract will be done with the business and zags collective um uh, and then ultimately a contract will be done with Zags Collective and the athlete. So, but typically money doesn't come in or out until the job's done, like anything else. So like we do the, you know, we record the content or we, the appearance is done. We'll invoice the, the organization that contracted, they'll send that money in and then that money comes back out. And then part of our responsibility is the, uh, the tax reporting. You know, that's the other thing that I think is a big piece in this NIL and an opportunity for uh, the Zags Collective is kind of financial literacy, the tax reporting, making sure that these athletes don't find themselves in a really bad spot at the end of the year uh, when taxes come due. Um, so that is all kind of talked about up front. Um, you know, some families uh, or some athletes have agents that we're also working with as a, um, another variable in this kind of chain this uh, chain of command that puts these deals together um and so and each athlete is um different their situation is different what they're willing to do is different but essentially the contracts are all written they include the deliverables and the details of it all when that contract when that um, engagement is executed we invoice the group money comes in money goes out to the athlete we track it all throughout the year we provide them with tax uh, information at the end of the year, and it's about as uh, straightforward as that. So you mentioned agents, and that's an interesting one because I know as a professional athlete, you have an agency that represents your your negotiating with the team for a contract, for example, or during the draft process. But that agency typically has a marketing arm. So it, it, share with us how agencies for particular players might be working alongside you or do they go directly to the companies or or is it been pretty above board trying to work together to make something work? Yeah, I, mostly above board. Um, I think Drew Timmy's a great one. They have an agency in place, 7-1 agency out of, out of Texas. Um, you know, they had, so that, for example, all those Northern Quest commercials that were in place, the Walker Furniture commercials, those came from the agent. They made direct contact with those organizations. Um, they negotiated that deal. They made Drew execute. In Drew's case, he wanted everything that came from the collective uh, to go through the agency, you know, appearance on podcasts, uh, the Shoot 360 event, a couple that were um, tied to you directly. So then we actually negotiate with the agent. So we talk to the agents, when's Drew available? Um, This is the deliverables. Um, We're working on one right now with HoopFest um, for Drew as well. Um, for this season. Um, but other guys, Anton, another example, he also is represented by the same agency, but Anton I've known for a lot longer. So I just go straight to Anton, you know, and say, Hey, where are you? Would you be willing to do this? So it's, it's total player preference. You know, some players want to go through the agent. Some players are okay making those decisions um, independently. Some of its parents or families that help um, uh, navigate all this. Uh, Because at the end of the day, these student athletes, yes, their name, image, and likeness has value, but they're student athletes first. You know, they're still going to school, you know, especially with Gonzaga, you know, for the end of February through March, just all NIL went dark. There wasn't even communication because they were focused on more important things. Um, And that's the way it should be, you know, and I think that's why these local collectives, the Zags Collective is so critical in the NIL space because at the end of the day, Zags have you know, Zags at heart. So like having someone who can, who has a sensitivity and a consideration for, you know, what the team's going through, kind of that athletic journey, what the end of, you know, what March looks like for these, uh, you know, men and women, um, I think is really, really important um, versus an agent who's somewhere else in the country and doesn't necessarily have the same feel for, you know, for the Zag way, which is a, it's a real way. Last question, Matt, before uh, I let you get going is uh, with the fact that, uh, there is so much interest in Gonzaga basketball, both on the men's side, but also on the women's program because they're 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 a really good program. Also in other sports, if there's a local businessman or a company uh, that is, that is interested in in being a part of yeah. getting a student athlete to be a part of a marketing campaign or just 
learning more about the Zags Collective? How do they get in touch with you or where can they learn more? Yeah, so zagscollective.com has everything, including my contact information. And that would be for businesses, certainly organizations that want to get involved, businesses that want to get involved, marketing departments inside of businesses that want to get involved and utilize athletes. But then also just for the common fan, the, all of us, the you know, Zag Nation, um, there's ways to get involved too. We offer membership packages that are going to give you access to exclusive content. Um, it's kind of like a subscription model that just kind of helps um, us to be able to go out and do different things in the community on behalf of the collective um, engaging with the athletes. So it's not just third-party businesses, but the collective can go out and do things in the community with the, with the athletes. Um, and that can be done through individual um, giving or individual membership purchases. All that stuff is on the website at zegscollective.com. Um, again, including my contact information. Uh, we just brought on another gentleman, Nate Brown is his name, um, to come in and give us, provide us more resource and more talent on the collective side. Um, and then the other thing I'll, I'll say to those business people, um, answer the phone call when we call, because we might be calling and asking, you know, proactively <laughs> asking uh, for help and interest in this uh, uh, name, image and likeness space. So please um, answer the call or return the call or email, because it would be great to get more of the community involved in fun and cool ways. Um, they get these these Gonzaga athletes and again, not just men's and women's basketball, but Gonzaga athletes um, more ingrained into the Spokane community. Awesome. Well, I know you and I chatted on this same podcast maybe nine months or so ago on NIL. It's changed in those nine months. We're going to have another conversation here in a few months uh, uh, about where it's continuing to head. So thanks again for joining, Matt. Yeah, thank you for having me on.